The tournament is down to just 16 teams. So if you've been watching from the sidelines, now is your chance to get in on the action. FanDuel Sportsbook is hooking you up with exclusive 30 to 1 odds on all 16 teams left in the bracket, even the top seeds remaining. That's right. New users get 30 to 1 odds on any team to win their next game this round. You can win $150 on a $5 bet. All you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, sign up with my promo code Hennig, and make your first deposit to unlock these exclusive 30 to 1 odds. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is easy to use, and when you win, you'll get paid in as little as 24 hours. Just sign up with my promo code Hennig to get your 30 to 1 odds on any of the final 16 teams in the tournament with FanDuel Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older to play and present in NJ or PA. New users only must wager in designated offer market. $10 first deposit required. Max bonus $150. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. A Town Square media station serving all of South Jersey. This is 97.3 ESPN. Home of the Philadelphia Eagles. He is hit. WENJ, WENJ HD Millville, Atlantic City. This is Sports Bash Saturday with Josh Hennig, live from the Matt Black Kia Studios. Now, Sports Bash Saturday. Here's Josh Hennig. Josh Hennig in the Matt Black Kia Studios, Power Hour edition of the show, only one hour here on 97.3 ESPN. Flyers hockey at the top of the hour. Tax board is open as always, 609-403-0973. Don't forget, we have Flyers hockey coming up at 1 p.m. Steve Coates, Tim Saunders on the call as Flyers look for some revenge against the Rangers today on 97.3 ES. We don't get Sweet 16 following the Flyers game, Sixers tonight at 10 o'clock. We got a lot to get to, only an hour to do it. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can watch the show right here on 97.3 ESPN. Yes, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just follow 97.3 ESPN. Eagles. We are still about 24 hours from the trade down in the draft. We got to talk about the Sixers. Road trip continues. Still no Embiid. Also, I'll give you my thoughts on UFC 260 tonight on pay-per-view. You heard my interview Yesterday and this morning's replay with Sean O'Malley. So we'll get into all that coming up here on 97.3 ESPN. But we got to start with the Eagles because now that we are roughly 24 hours removed from the trade down, there's a lot of opinions out there about what exactly is going on with the Eagles and what their plans are. And I put the poll up yesterday at 97.3 ESPN when I was filling in for Mike Gill. And I, I talked about the fact that there are some reasons why this team may actually have done what they have done. And one of the reasons why they did it, I think, is because I think that they're prioritizing certain positions over than others, which is why I put the poll up at 973 ESP on Twitter. You still have a couple hours left to vote on the poll at 973 ESPN. The poll question is, I'm asking you Eagle fans, if, now this is an if, the Eagles traded down and they walk away from the draft with both Patrick Sertain the second in the first round and Asante Samuel Jr. in the second, how do you feel about the trade? Was it still worth it or should they have stayed at six? Well, right now at 973 ESPN, the current poll results are this. The poll results go on at 973 ESPN. Right now, we got 56% say yes, it was worth trading down, and 43.5% say no. And frankly, I'm I'm not surprised by that at all. I feel like that's the least surprising thing so far. And I'm gonna retweet this so it pops up at the top of the feed here. Because When you think about this team and what they've done, this poll is very reflective of how people view the organization. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the Eagles come away with the best draft pick or the best draft capital in the league. It doesn't matter if they have 11 picks or three picks next year in the first round. Nobody seems to care because 
there are people who view this draft a certain way and they can't be convinced otherwise. It's either Howie Roseman's the worst GM in the world and he can't draft anybody, or it's I wanted fill in the blank player and now that we traded down, we can't get that player. And I can't guarantee you or promise you that whoever the Eagles pick at 12th overall, if they stay there, by the way, is going to be worth it. I can't promise you that if you would have stayed at six, that it would have been a guarantee either. What I can promise you is that if this organization is serious, as they claim to be, about going out there and rebuilding this team, this is where you have to start. You have to start by making moves that put you in a position to walk away with not just this year, but multiple years walking away with as many opportunities to draft talent as possible. Because this team is not a one-year project. I love the comment that Adam Kaplan mentioned yesterday on Football at 4 on 97.3 ESP. If you missed the segment, it's up on the website at 97.3 ESPN.com. Adam Kaplan mentioned, he said, that he was told by an NFL executive that the idea is you can't rebuild in one offseason. You have to have a long-term plan. One move, one draft, one offseason isn't going to fix everything. So as long as we hold that true, as long as we keep to that mindset, we can move forward and say, It doesn't matter what happens just in this draft. What happens is what happens in every draft moving forward. There's a stat that's been put out there, and we've discussed this yesterday here on 97.3 ESP, as long as multiple times. The Philadelphia Eagles haven't drafted outside of one pro bowler in the last five drafts, okay? That's the ESPN stats and info, you know, whether you want to go the five years or the 2014, whatever uh, reference you want to use. And I really hate that stat because I feel like everyone keeps using it again and again because it, it has zero context to it. The first problem I have is that, so what you're basically saying is that Miles Sanders and Dallas Goddard are, are nobodies. They're wasted picks, right? just because they haven't become pro bowlers yet? Am I supposed to believe all of a sudden that Dallas Goddard and Miles Sanders are bums because they haven't been gotten the, the lofty pro bowl label? By the way, last year's pro bowl was a sham anyway because when you don't have the game, you don't have the guys opting out of the game, which allows more guys to get into that pro bowl label. Think about it. Every year there's like five guys who become pro bowlers who would have been pro bowlers otherwise if it wasn't for other guys either opting out or those teams being in the Super Bowl. So am I really supposed to believe that every single one of these pro bowlers really are pro bowlers? And just because Miles Sanders and Dallas Goddard haven't become pro bowlers means that Howie Roseman's the worst drafter in the world? We forget to have context with some of this stuff. Listen, has Howie Roseman made some great draft picks? Nah. The majority of the Eagles draft picks have either been underwhelming or they have just completely failed since 2016. And I use since 2016 because that was after Chip Kelly left and that is the line of demarcation. Because for whatever reason, nobody even despite the evidence out there, can agree about what happened from 2015 to 2010. So, you know what? Let's just throw that out the window, all right? Nobody wants to acknowledge what really happened for that five-year period, even though there's tons of facts and information out there. So we'll just throw that out the window. Let's go with what we know, all right? Howie Roseman became the executive VP and general manager again at the beginning of the 2016 football year. So since 2016, have the Eagles drafts gone great? No. Great is not the word I would use at all. 
Have they gone horrible? I won't use that word either. Because if it went horrible, then how on earth did you end up with not one, not two, but three starters in the Super Bowl from the 2016 draft? How did you end up with Dallas Goddard in 2018 and Josh Sweat and Jordan Maialata, who's probably going to be your starting left tackle long term? How did you end up with Miles Sanders in 2019? And don't talk to me about the 2020 class because we don't even know everything yet. It's hard to judge a draft class a year or two after they've been drafted. Don't tell me Dillard is a bust or a failure because the guys barely had a chance to play due to injury. So the Eagles trading down is not a sign of incompetence. It's not a sign the Eagles don't know what they're doing. It's a sign that they are trying something different. They're trying to do something different. And listen, I'm willing to wait and see. And that's why I asked the question. If the Eagles walk out of this with two of the top six corners in the draft in the first two rounds, are we really that disappointed? Considering the fact that watching this team the last couple of years, their quarterback play has been poor to miserable to just absolute yuck in the last few years. I get that Rasul Douglas is playing all right with Carolina, but he didn't fit the scheme here. Sidney Jones couldn't stay healthy, and when he did get on the field, he had some serious lapses in judgment at times. You look at the other cornerbacks. It's so obvious that Avante Maddox is a slot corner. He can't play the outside consistently. He just can't. Jalen Mills was a good, solid, serviceable defensive back, but now he's not here anymore. Realistically, your cornerbacks right now are Darius Slay and nobody else. So, to me, you may love the flashy pick of getting a Jamar Chase or a Kyle Pitts, and I would have been okay with either one of those guys. But if you have a chance to fix the defensive situation, I'm okay with that. Micah Parsons might be on the board as well. J.C. Horn, there's a lot of talent in this draft. We act like the talent is only in the top 10. I told you guys yesterday, J.J. Watt was the 11th pick in the NFL draft. 11! There were three quarterbacks picked ahead of J.J. Watt, and two of them are complete and utter wastes of draft picks. Jake Locker had to leave the NFL because of numerous concussions, and he was worried about his short and long-term health. Didn't work out for the Titans at all. Blaine Gabber, the guy's basically a career backup. There's no way that guy is better than a future Hall of Famer. But yet, that's what happens in the NFL draft. There's going to be four quarterbacks drafted in a few weeks. Not one, not two, not three, but four. At minimum, ahead of the Eagles at 12. We know that Trevor Lawrence is going one. Everyone assumes that that, uh, Zach Wilson is going at two. The 49ers, at least I don't think, and I don't have found anybody else who disagrees with me on any platform, ESPN, Fox Sports, NFL Network. I haven't found a single person who was like, hey, you know what the 49ers trade up the third overall for? Kyle Pitts. No, they're saying they trade up for a quarterback, all right? The Schefter report specifically said Jimmy Garoppolo is our quarterback for now. For now. They're, they're getting a quarterback. Whether it's Lance or whether it's Fields, I don't know. Now, at four, it gets interesting because the Falcons could get a quarterback themselves or they could trade down themselves and let maybe a team like the Panthers jump up and get a quarterback that they want. So you're going to have at least four quarterbacks drafted in the top ten. Maybe five, depending on what happens with other things. But whenever there's quarterbacks drafted high in the draft, it pushes better talent down. So guys who are supposed to be the top-tier talent in the draft get pushed down further and further and further because the quarterbacks are always the hot item in this league to be drafted. So don't overthink the Eagles situation. Now, if I'm wrong, text board is open, 609-403-0973. If I'm wrong, 
We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter here on 97.3 ESPN. Josh Hennig live at the Matt Black Kia Studios on 97.3 ESPN. Matt Black Kia, they want to get you approved today. Matt Black Kia on the Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township. Get a couple of your guys' thoughts on the show today. We're only here for an hour. We have Flyers Hockey at the top of the hour here on 97.3 ESPN, followed by the Sweet 16 right here on your home for Flyers, Sixers, Eagles, the NCAA tournament, the Super Bowl, and more, 97.3 ESPN. Also, forget 97.3 ESPN.com for all your coverage of all of the sports team, the Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, Flyers, and Phillies. I mean, it's been a wild week. It's been a wild week in sports, and it's not coming down anytime soon. All right, listen, if I'm wrong, let me know. I'm here. I'm not afraid of criticism or disagreement. Listen, we, we had a lot of people commenting on the show yesterday. Some of them agree with me. Some of them did it. And I'm fine with that. But I just need someone to explain to me exactly how trading down the 12, potentially ending up with three first-round picks next year, is all bad. I don't, I don't see the negative outside of unless you were looking that you wanted a specific player. If you're somebody who says, I wanted Kyle Pitts, or I wanted Jamar Chase, or I wanted whoever, then yes, moving from 6 to 12 takes you out of that driving position to put yourself in that opportunity to get the player you really want. But if your reason to me is, I hate trading down because Howie Roseman can't draft, you got to come with, you got to come out with a little bit better than that. Because as I've, I've talked about yesterday, I showed you again today. The Eagles are not the worst team in the NFL at drafting. They're on the same par as the Patriots. You don't believe me? Go to the Patriots picks. And kill Harry? Hello? I mean, yikes. That didn't work out at all for the Patriots. All right, see so a couple of your comments. We got a couple of comments on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at 973ESPN. First, I'm going to get to this text over at 609 609- 403-0973. Uh, Nick from Brigantine's first to chime in and says, with all the failures from the quarterbacks getting drafted high in the past, I can understand why they didn't go high for a quarterback pick. That's Nick from Brigantine. A couple things, Nick. First of all, I think that the Eagles are, are trying to play a shell game right now when it comes to quarterback. They're trying to act like they don't love Jalen Hurts, or they're not as high on Jalen. You know, all these weird reports coming out. Well, there's not consensus in the building on Jalen Hurts. What does that even mean? Consensus. Has there ever consensus on anything? This is 2021. This is America. Is there consensus on anything? Come on. All right? That report in and of itself is wacky to me. So, I think the Eagles organization is playing completely uh, just trying to not actually answer the question. I think that's what's going on. I think part of the issue right now is this organization is frankly just doing what they think is best to build long-term. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. And Nick, you're right. There have been a lot of quarterbacks who have not worked out in the past drafts. They just haven't. Every year, there are quarterbacks drafted who don't work out. Mitchell Trubisky was picked ahead of Pat Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. Pat Mahomes, he's got a Super Bowl ring. Mitch Trubisky, he's the backup in Buffalo. Well, there you go. Happens all the time. Even the year when Lamar Jackson was drafted 32nd overall, Sam Darnold, jury's out. Josh Rosen, Hasn't worked out. Baker Mayfield, pretty good. Hasn't won an MVP like Lamar Jackson. You could argue that right now Josh Allen has performed better than all the guys drafted ahead of him. Now part of that is because he has Brian Dable in Buffalo. And Josh Rosen had the uh, conveyor belt of different coordinators in different locations. But still, your situation has an impact. So drafting a quarterback high is, is like playing roulette, honestly, in my opinion. You don't know what you're getting. You want to roll the dice and hope you get it on the right spot? Hey, there's a a lot of luck, fortune, destiny, uh, whatever you want to call it involved in the quarterback position. So 
that's part of the reason why the Eagles have no interest in quarterback. The other thing, Nick, from Brigantine, you got to keep in mind is you drafted Jalen Hurts for a reason. Howie Roseman said they couldn't pass up the opportunity to get him because they made that mistake with another quarterback years ago. And Joe Banner, who worked in the Eagles organization at that time that Howie Roseman was referring to, he says the Eagles wanted Russell Wilson, they missed on him, and they had to settle for Nick Foles. And that is a story that's been corroborated by a lot of reports. So for whatever reason, the Eagles looked at Jalen Hurts and they said, we can't pass up this guy. Well, if you couldn't pass up on him before, why are you throwing him out with the baby with the bathwater now? You're not. So this idea that the quarterbacks in this draft are so much better than Jalen Hurts, I think is a lot of uh, a lot of horse manure, honestly. To me, there's only two quarterbacks in this draft who are can't miss prospects. The other three I have questions about. Trevor Lawrence, all the experts agree, is the surefire first overall pick, and he should be. And coming into this draft, coming into college, the second guy was Justin Fields. And some people liked Fields more than Lawrence. Some people liked Lawrence more than Fields. Right now, everyone agrees that they would take Lawrence ahead of Fields, partially because of perception of who those quarterbacks are. Fine. But to me, those are the only two quarterbacks who I think have better NFL potential than Hurts. So that's part of the reason why the Eagles, they, they just can't shoot high for a pick. And that report yesterday about Zach Wilson and the Eagles, now that 24 hours later, that report looks really, that report looks really dumb. <laughs> it's looking worse and worse with more of the information that's coming out. Ian Rappaport, listen, that guy has worked in the league a long time, but there's a reason why. He is not the number one guy, and it's Adam Schefter, and it's not even close. Because Rappaport has gotten a lot of things wrong about the Eagles, and Shefty has gotten nothing wrong about the Eagles. Remember that next time you see Rap Sheet report some sort of weird story that you're like, ooh, that looks so interesting. You might want to wait and see how it plays out and see how the other reports come out about it. All right, a couple more comments to get to. We got uh, B King 511 on Twitter, says, getting J.C. Horn and Asante Samuel Jr. would be a home run. Hey, listen, I'd be fine with J.C. Horn. To me, to me, it's Sertain or Horn. I have no interest in Farley. I don't like a guy with multiple back injuries and back surgeries at this young. I mean, the guy is, I mean, I mean, how old is Caleb Farley, for goodness sakes? Caleb Farley is 22 years old. He turns 23 later this year. So the dude is about 13, 14 years younger than me. I've never had back surgery. Caleb Farley has. Yeah, that's a little concerning. I'm a little concerned about the 22-year-old getting back surgery. Hasn't even played in the NFL yet. Missed games in college due to back problems. Sat out all of last year to prepare for the NFL draft. And now he gets back surgery just a couple months before the NFL draft. I'm out on him. I like J.C. Horn, though. I think J.C. Horn got a bad rap in college, and he's getting more recognition now because of the fact that people are seeing more of his tape and focusing more on him. Because if you watch South Carolina this year, there were times that all you could think about is why is this team so much garbage, and when are they going to fire Will Muschamp, and then who is going to be the next head coach? Now that you've removed all of that noise and all that distraction and all those smoke screens, J.C. Horn started to look like a pretty good corner. Now, him and Samuel, to me, are in a similar boat. And that is, I think they are both outside corners in the NFL, but I have a, I have a lot of questions about their long, outside corners long term. I think there's an element to both Samuel Jr. and Horn's game that would make them potentially safeties later on. Remember, Malcolm Jenkins was drafted as a corner, moved to safety. Charles Woodson, Rod Woodson. There's a long history of guys who start out as outside corners, and then as they get older, they move to safety. I think one of those guys could potentially be that guy as well. I would say Horn more so than Samuel, but I think they both can do it. I think that they're they're both phenomenal athletes. They are both guys with very good instincts. I personally like Sertain better than both of them because I think Sertain is the more physical of the three guys, but 
I think Horn is not much lower than Sertain when it comes to physicality. I think Asante Samuel is a ball hawk, just like his dad. But I think he's, he's, I, I think Asante Samuel Jr. has a chance to be better than his dad. I think Patrick Sertain Jr. Sorry, the second has a chance to be better than his dad as well. That's saying something. All right, we got David on Facebook. I'm going to get to your comment on the other side of the break. We got Dan EHT. I'm going to get to your comment on the other side of the break as well. Josh Hennick here, Sports Bash Saturday. Only an hour of showtime here on 97.3 ESPN, leading you to the Flyers hockey at 1 p.m. on 97.3 ESPN. Sports Bash Saturday being brought to you by Broadleys Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, your local provider who makes it easy to upgrade your home to the most energy-efficient equipment on the market. Plus, learn how to get a free furnace during the month of March only. That's Broadleys Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. All right, 609-403-0973. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at 973ESPN. I got text to get to. I got Facebook and YouTube messages to get to. All next, right here on 97.3 ESPN FM. And don't forget the 97.3 ESPN mobile app. It's free. Thanks to First Bank of Seattle City. This is Sports Bash Saturday with Josh Hennig. Live from the Matt Black Kia Studios. Here's Josh Hennig. Josh Hennig here on Sports Bash Saturday, 97.3 ESPN. 30 minutes till Flyers hockey, then the Sweet 16. Then Sixers tonight versus the Clippers here on 97.3 ESPN. Don't forget, my friends, over at FanDuel Sportsbook, there's always that one team that ruins your bracket. I know it ruined mine, at least. And that's why this year I'm betting a tournament on FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Because FanDuel wants to make you a millionaire. That's right, you. They're giving away $1 million to a lucky better, new and existing users. Get additional shots every day at the payout. When you bet the tournament, you bet the tournament every day, you have more opportunities to become a millionaire. So if you want to win a million dollars from FanDuel Sportsbook or maybe even a thousand dollars, make sure you download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Use my promo code Hennig when you sign up to get in on all the action with FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, that's promo code Hennig on FanDuel Sportsbook. Must be 21 order to play. President NJ or PA to purchase necessary. Restrictions apply for one million dollar drawing risk-free offer for first online money wager only site credit is not withdrawable and expires at 14 days restrictions apply see sportsbook.fanduel.com for details gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER because that disclaimer is not a mouthful <laughs> all right we got text to get to 609-403-0973 also, we got messages on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. I'm going to get to the message on Facebook first because I'm going to get these, all of your guys' messages in the order they came in. So this is completely chronological order. So David messaged in on Facebook as he's watching us at 973 ESP on Facebook. He says, Eagles only trade down the 12 because they know who they want in that range and they get a number one pick out of it for next year. I'm confident that one of the top three receivers will be there. If it doesn't happen... Then they pivot and move on to one of the other 10 other positions they need. It's a win-win. That's from David watching on Facebook. So, David, a couple things. Number one, I agree with you. It's a win-win no matter what because you get another first-round pick next year. Second of all, I'm, I'm a little conflicted on who exactly will be available of the wide receivers at that point because, number one, I'm assuming based on all the mock drafts I've seen, which I feel like there's about 2 billion of them out there now, when realistically they're, they're all kind of saying the same things. But if I'm to believe all the mock drafts, Kyle Pitts and Jamar Chase are both being drafted in the top 10. After that, it depends on who you ask. Because, one, it depends on who does or doesn't trade up into the first round. If there's four quarterbacks drafted in the top 10, then I'm assuming that all three receivers will be gone. If Mac Jones, as well as the other four top quarterbacks, are drafted in the top 10, then either Smith or Waddle will drop to you. So that's that's kind of how I'm conjecturing it right now. I'm also assuming that at least two offensive linemen will be taken ahead of him. Uh, Penny Sewell is a top 10 pick, I believe, no matter what. Uh, the kid from Virginia Tech is, scout, is skyrocketing off of draft boards. I forget his name off the top of my head, but I think he'll be drafted highly either by the Giants or the Cowboys. I'm assuming right now 
that the Cowboys go defense and they go or offensive linemen, and then the Giants go offensive linemen or defensive linemen in the draft. I don't think that either one of those teams are taking wide receivers, especially considering how much money they just spent on wide receiver. And the Giants aren't going cornerback because they just signed a Dory Jackson to a huge contract. So there is an outside possibility that either Waddle or Smith will be there at 12. I'm just not banking on it. I'm not, uh, I'm not guaranteeing anything with that move. Uh, just because of the fact that when, when I think about what the Eagles need and what other teams need ahead of them, I, I just think that there's a possibility for a lot of different ways this draft can go. Again, that's, again, based on the information we have right now. Things can change, all right? Listen, there's more pro days to come. There's more. There's always that one strange story that comes out, like, right before the draft about somebody and affects the draft overall for that guy. So definitely keep that in mind as well. We don't know what may or may not happen uh, with the draft. All right, let's get some text messages here as well. 609-403-0973. 609-403-0973. I want to first get to Danny H.C. His text came in next. Danny H.C. says, The Eagles are in a full rebuild, not a retool. The thing with the NFL is you can rebuild and can be done quickly. They will be a three-win team in 2021 and be back in contention in 2022. First of all, I agree with you that it doesn't take long for you to rebuild the NFL. We've seen teams make quick turnarounds a lot. Listen, the Browns, thanks to a new head coach, went from being an embarrassment to a playoff team with Kevin Stefanski. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Jacksonville Jaguars a couple of years are a playoff team. And with the way the Houston franchise is going, with the owner being just completely insulting to everyone he deals with, combined with the confusion of who's really running the front office to the whole Deshaun Watson. I mean, is he in legal trouble? He's now got 20 women suing him for sexual harassment. It's it's going to be a weird situation down in Houston. So they're probably not going to be in playoff contention anytime soon. And I think the window in Tennessee is small. I don't think they have a very big long-term window because of some of the players and some of the draft misses they have. Remember, they spent a first-round pick on Isaiah Wilson. He's not even in the NFL right now. That was just a couple of years ago. So, to me, a team like Jacksonville, they could turn around really quick in the South, in the AFC. So, what makes the Eagles, who I think are in a better situation than the Jags are, they're certainly a better situation than Houston is, they can make a turnaround as well. I don't agree with the three-win team thing. I think the Eagles win at least six games this upcoming year. I think if the guys are, there's no way you're that unhealthy this upcoming year. I think that you get rid of Jason Peters, you get rid of some of the, basically the, uh, the, beaten up bodies on this team. You move on for some of those guys and you have less injuries this year. And I think you win a few more games. And also, don't forget, at least three of those losses were completely Carson Wentz's fault. Don't overlook that. Some of those interceptions, the, the game against the Bengals, they should have won. They didn't. The first game against Washington, they could have easily won and they completely imploded. The, uh, the second Cowboys game was a mess. I mean, they're, they should have won more games this year alone if they would have played a lot better. So I think we overlooked that a little bit. 609-403-0973 is the text. Our next text that came in is from Brian and Absekin. Brian says, J.C. Horn and a 2022 first-round pick sounds like a better haul than Kyle Pitts for this team than he's held at every position. That's from Brian and Absekin. Yeah, Brian, I think we're overlooking the value of that, that first-round pick next year because if Carson Wentz meets the prerequisites, which I think most people assume that he will, the Eagles will have three first-round picks next year. And that does two things for you. Number one, if Jalen Hurts doesn't work out, now you have three first-round picks. That's more than enough ammunition to trade up in the draft to go get another quarterback. So that's the first reason why it works. The second reason why it works, let's say Jalen Hurts does play well. Now you have three first-round picks. So you can now get three first-round talents to rebuild this roster. We're talking about a quick turnaround. Dan EHT said you could turn around quick in a rebuild in the NFL. 
you can do a pretty good job with two or three first round picks. The other thing is, what if there's a guy you really want? What if the Eagles picks next year? Let's say they do go six and ten. I'm just throwing out a scenario for you guys. And now you have the 49ers, because that was the 49ers pick that you got from 49ers for 12. It'll be the Dolphins pick you have in 2022. So let's say the Dolphins are in the 20s. You're in the high teens. And then the third pick from the Colts is maybe like pick 26. So let's say it's pick 22, pick 26, and pick 12. Well, what you could do is if you see a guy in the top 10, all right, that, or the top five, and you're like, we want that guy. You know, what if it's a, a premier pass rusher? I've told you about uh, a Thibodeau from Oregon, Kayvon Thibodeau. That guy is a freak. That guy reminds me so much of, of uh, Chandler Jones. He's like an amalgamation of Chandler Jones and Chase Young. If you got a combo guy like that, a freakazoid that you can get in the top five, take your your first round pick, take one of the other first round picks, get into that top five, get the two or one or wherever you have to get to to get Thibodeau. I don't think you can get one, but maybe you can get like third overall pick, get Thibodeau. Now you walk out of the draft in the first round with a superstar at level defensive end next year. I certainly would like that. I know some of you guys online want to make fun of me because I like defense. Hey, listen, outside of the Eagles Patriots Super Bowl, the majority of the teams that have won the Super Bowl in the last 20 years have been teams with top-tier defenses. Patriots shut down the Rams. The Bucks completely neutralized Patrick Mahomes this past year. The 49ers had a top-five defense when they got to the Super Bowl and lost to the Chiefs the year before. There's not a team that got to the Super Bowl outside of the Patriots-Eagles year that had a, had a bad defense. And even the Patriots that year had a solid defense. And so did the Eagles. The Eagles were top five in numerous categories. It's just that that year, they just imploded in the Super Bowl. Nick Foles, Tom Brady went off. By the way, Tom Brady puts up 400 passing yards on you. Are you really a bad defense, or are you just being owned by the GOAT? Just, just a point. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Let's get a couple more comments as well. People listening. 609-403-0973. Also, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, David followed up on his comments. Says, Absolutely, I totally agree. The key is all five quarterbacks are off the board as well as the Cowboys taking a defensive back. Well, I think the Cowboys will take a defensive player. The reason why I say that is because they hired Dan Quinn to be their defensive coordinator. And Dan Quinn comes from that uh, Seahawks cover three defense. So that depends on a lot of play from the cornerback and linebacker positions. So I'm assuming that if they're going to go with that kind of defense, that kind of guy to call their defense and to coach it up in Dan Quinn, I'm assuming that they're going to need Micah Parsons or they're going to need Caleb Farley or they're going to need J.C. Horn. They're going to need a cornerback or a linebacker. So I'm assuming the Cowboys go with defensive back or linebacker there because of what they're doing this offseason. So I agree with that 100%. I think that is something to keep in mind. All right, we got a couple more comments on the text board to get to. 609-403-0973 is the text board. Again, we're only here for an hour, so get all your thoughts and comments in. We also have the poll question. We will update it on the other side about the Eagles and the draft. We're only here till 1 o'clock. Flyers versus Rangers today on 97.3 ESPN. I am Josh Hennig. I see questions about more players on the text where I will get to your questions as well coming up on the other side. 97.3 ESPN FM, Josh Hennig hanging out with you. And this is Sports Bash Saturday, a power hour edition live from the Matt Black Kia Studios on 97.3 ESPN.com. And of course, 97.3 ESPN mobile app for your Eagles, Sixer, Flyers, and Phillies coverage right there on the app. Just download it. It's free. Thanks to First Bank of Seattle City, the 97.3 ESPN mobile app. This is Sports Bash Saturday with Josh Hennig, live from the Matt Black Kia Studios. Here's Josh Hennig. Josh Hennig hanging out with you here on 97.3 ES. Don't forget Sports Bash Saturday, the Power Hour edition being brought to you by Broadleys Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, your local provider who makes it easy to upgrade your home to the most energy-efficient equipment on the market. Plus, learn how to get a free furnace during the month of March only. That's Broadleys Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, we got more of your comments to get to. I got more texts that came in during the break. Also, more comments on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We're talking about the Eagles trading down 
to the pick. I'll also give you a quick preview of UFC 260 just in a few minutes from now. But first, I want to get to your comments here. 609-403-0973 and Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. I'm taking your comments and questions in the order they came in. Uh, Bobby chime in, chimes in on YouTube with a trade scenario. He says, let's say the Eagles take J.C. Horn at 12. Then they trade the 37th pick, the 84th pick, and a 2022 fourth-round pick to the Jets for number 23 in the first round to get Xavion Collins. A couple things, Bobby. First of all, I don't think that is enough assets to get the 23rd pick. I, um, If I'm remembering off the top of my head the sheets that those guys have in the front offices, I think that the 2022 fourth-round pick is too low. The way it works, for those who don't know, is NFL teams typically go off of a, of a sheet that has a, a point value to every pick. And this was developed originally by the Dallas Cowboys. Now almost every other NFL team uses it. And basically the way the, the it works is they say, all right, so the 23rd pick is worth, let's say, 200 points. So you need to have the number of picks that add up to 200 points on this spreadsheet. And if I'm remembering correctly, a fourth round pick in 2022 is really not a very high value. So you would need to give up more than that. You would probably need to give up like a second or third round pick in 2022, probably a second round pick because the, a, any first round pick is considered high value typically on that draft sheet. So I like your idea of Zevion Collins. I think he's a very good linebacker in college. I think he was a little underrated because of the defense that he played on. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't allowed to do certain things that I think he can do because he is a much better athlete than he showcased at times in college. But uh, you would have to give up more draft capital than that. But I like, I like your thinking outside the box. Now, now, Bobby followed up and gave the point total. Again, I don't know if that's 100% correct because I don't have the sheet in front of me. So, but I, I remember, I would double check what Lamar Jackson went for. And that would give me a, a better idea of exactly how that worked. All right, let's get a couple of texts in here, 609-403-0973. One texter says, listen, some fans are only mad at the trade because the player they wanted, the Eagles probably won't get at 12, but three potential first-round picks was a no-brainer. Yeah, I think that people are overlooking the long-term, because people are, not everyone, but some people are very short-sighted when it comes to uh, draft picks. You know, they're like, oh, this and that. Listen. Everybody in their right mind, the texter's right, wants three first-round picks. Uh, another texter chimes in at 609-403-0973. He asks, what do you think of Jacoby Stevens and Tamori and Terry? All right. Those are two very different players. So Tamori and Terry is a wide receiver from Florida State. Uh, I think Terry is one of those guys that is going – he is going to be somebody who I think can be a solid NFL receiver, but – I would argue that half the receivers the Eagles have right now are better than he is. I think that he has the ability to be a, a playmaker in the NFL, but I think he's limited. I just don't think that his hands are as good as they can be. I think his ability to get off the line of scrimmage is not that great. He's got good size. He's got good athleticism. I think he's durable, but I don't think that he is um, a guy that I would hyper-focus on. Maybe if he's around on day two or day three, I would consider grabbing him. Uh, but he wouldn't be a high, uh, like a, a high level guy I would focus on. Now, Jacoby Stevens is a safety from LSU. He is an interesting case study because Jacoby Stevens is, he's tough as nails. He's a box safety. All right. He's a guy who's got great instincts as a tackler. He's somebody who, when he tackles, he throws his full body into it. He is a very underrated as a hitter. The problem with him is his path coverage is pretty limited. So if he's a great box safety, he's not going to be you do good. He, in some ways, his skill set is similar to Roddy McLeod, except I think McLeod is a better coverage safety uh, than Stevens is and what Stevens can be. I think Stevens, though, has the football intelligence to be and become a better football player. I just don't know if his hip flexibility is good enough for him to be an effective pass cover safety. Now, in the Eagles defense with Jonathan Gannon, maybe they will use him similar if they were to draft him 
to what the Vikings do, for example, with Harrison Smith. The problem is, is that Stevens is similar to Kevon Wallace. Kevon Wallace, who they drafted last year, and Stevens are very similar players. Now, you heard me mention, I'll get this really quick in here. You heard me mention, he's an interesting case study. That LSU defense last year under Bo Pelini was absolute garbage. They were 100 times better the year they won the national championship. So Stevens is going to get a bad rap because he was on a garbage defense with an idiot of a play caller in Bo Pelini. That defense got a little better as the year progressed. So he's going to be an interesting case study of where he actually goes in the draft because I think that he could be a very good box safety. I think he's a very tough guy, but I'm not 100% convinced that he's that much better than Kevon Wallace. That's, that's just kind of how I'm looking at that guy. Good question, though. I, I like the outside-the-box question there by the texter. If I had to pick my choice between Stevens and Terry, like if the Eagles could only walk out of the draft with one of those two guys, I would be inclined to say Stevens because I feel like Tamari and Terry doesn't offer you anything overtly special, whereas Stevens, he could at least be a special teams guy. He could at least be a guy who is running down on kickoffs and blowing people up. I feel like Terry's a dime a dozen receiver. You could find a receiver like him almost anywhere in the draft. All right, a lot of great questions, a lot of great comments. Thank you to all of you guys for commenting throughout the show. Really quick, UFC 260. I talked about this yesterday. I talked about it again today. I know Miocic is the underdog tonight. I think he gets the win. He's been an underdog three times in his title fights, and he's won all three. So he and tonight, he's going to set the record for most title defenses in UFC history for a man, and he's an underdog. And I think he wins again tonight. I think Ngannou is limited. I think Miocic is going to establish himself as the greatest heavyweight in MMA history with the win tonight. I'm taking Miocic, combining his money line with Sean O'Malley. I believe it's still plus 176 on the money line uh, if you combine those two in a parlay. I also like tonight uh, O'Malley to win in exciting fashion. I think he wants to prove that well, his last fight was a fluke, that it was just an injury that limited him. All right, I'm Josh Hennig. At Josh Hennig on Twitter. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.